Hello, we're just excited we're here in Freeport, Bahamas, Two Word Network, another level, with my good friend Zendo. Zendo. Zendo Carey. Yes. That's it. And I'm telling you, I heard this young man speak this morning for the prayer breakfast at five. Man, what an awesome word. Just tell everybody about you, what you do and where you're from and your life. Well, we, uh, I'm uh, an associate minister at the Zion Baptist Community Church. Uh, we had a fire four years ago and we're in the process of rebuilding right now. Uh, my pastor is the Reverend Peter Pinder, who is a trained Southern Baptist minister, okay. but, wow. but uh, he's doing well. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes. And so I've been working with him since I was about 19. He was 27, I was 19. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm telling you, I heard him speak very seasonal word. And when I say a seasonal word, we're living in a day and age where the Bible says that there's going to come a time when men won't endure sound doctrine for they have an itch in ears. And what God is doing, he's raising up faithful men that is willing to be obedient. And when I heard you speak this morning, I heard the voice of God saying in this now season, in order for people to get their deliverance, they got to hear the truth. And, and I agree with that. The, 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 the Bible says the truth sets you free, yes. not only in hearing, but in application. Yes. And what's been happening is that if you cannot apply the truth if you don't hear the truth. That's true. And so, so folks are getting watered down versions of the truth. And if you get watered down versions of the truth, when you apply it, you're going to get a watered down effect. That's true. Mm -hmm. and, and what you said was so powerful, so impactful. I see the spirit of prophecy all in his life too, being able to speak into people's lives. And, 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 and you know, even though we had a lot going on this morning, he allowed God to use them even to the point, and I can be a witness to this, oftentimes as pastors we speak, and because we're speaking, and when God tells us to do something, we have to go back and do it. Absolutely. When he came back and he spoke to the men, and in this day and age, men need to be men. We've been hiding so long when, when God is holding the man, the head, accountable. Exactly. Now, just, tell, just expound on some of the things that I heard from you this morning. Well, I, I, I have a passion for family. Yes. And I'm, I, I don't like the, the percentage of divorce that is now taking place in the church. Yes. And, and so for me, my heart burns toward that end. And I, I want to educate men in understanding that you have a central role in God's plan in the earth. Yes. Not only to govern, but to manage. I, in, the, in the sermon, I use the, the commander's role as, yes. a, as a, the family, as, awesome. an, as an outpost, yeah, yeah. where the, the, the husband is the, the commander who literally manages his force yes. so that he could make sure that if, if worse comes to worse and there's a need for his forces to be called up, he can actually get them to respond without any, um, what's that, any defection, if you please. Yes. So tell me about your journey from 19 as you started in ministry. Yeah, like I uh, started to say, I, I've been doing a recent retrospective on places I've visited, um, jobs that I've held, yes. and God is asking me now to retrospect on them to see how they can play in and apply to themselves to God to the to the preaching of the gospel yes. because everything is preparatory to that. That's right. And so um, I've really been uh, I've I've done auto mechanics. I've done wow uh, culinary. I've done insurance. I've done on all of these various little dabs here yes. and there. Yes. And they have essentially shape me into the type of man that I am today. And the one that stands out the most, believe it or not, is when I was an underwriter, what we call an underwriter, right. insurance, insurance agent. Yes. Because uh, as much as the plan of salvation is is insurance, is also assurance. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So I use all of the tenets of insurance to, to help to carry the weight of teaching the gospel to people. And, and, and that's what we do. And it's ironic you mentioned that. Uh, culinary, I, I spent, I was a, I was in food service for 20 years and three months before God released me. And I was a production manager, semi-chef. And in my learning in the world, God used that to prepare you for what he's taking Absolutely. you to. Um, I look at, and some of you may know a lot of things that we do, have a lot of churches and all of this, I was prepared before. It, when Moses, Moses spent time in Pharaoh's house. Absolutely. Before he was able, so he knew. Mm -hmm. 
And so God will allow you to know just like all of the gifts that God has given you, insurance and assurance. And <laughs> in, in our country, we teach about insurance, transfer risk to somebody else. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know, if I'm found guilty of at fault, I have somebody Absolutely. that I can transfer. A lot more like with Jesus. Exactly. That's we believe in him and that's what it is. We transfer all of our past sins through the blood. The Father sees us as per perfect. But but here's the, the selling point for me. Yeah. With insurance, if you fail to pay your premium, that's right. your policy lapses. That's you true. lose all of its benefit that you purchased. That's true. Whereas with, with salvation, you lose no benefit because Jesus took it all into account and he nailed it onto Woo. the cross. And as old Baptists, we can say Jesus paid it oh, all. Oh, he paid it all, <laughs> yeah. I tell everybody, when you go to the store, that Jesus paid it all, the people say, I need my money. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I'm, I'm telling you, if you have not heard this young man speak, his information is going to be on the screen. I am telling you, I mean, he talks about family, he talks about the duty of the man, the husband, he talks about the church, and and I mean, I mean, I was, I would say I was so blessed, I'm, I'm coming to support, but I was blessed by the word of God. And you know, through it all, I sing and do all the things, but the word. Exactly, exactly. The word is what, mm -hmm. when we act upon the word and let the word manifest itself exactly. in our life, that would bring cha change, change, transformation. Transformation, Woo, talk, oh that, yeah. That, can you yeah. tell about that? That, that was, that in, was in, in the book of Romans 12, Paul says, uh, uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I, and I use the example of the butterfly, butterfly of course. Correct. And every stage of that animal's transformation, it, its attitude change. That's true. The, the caterpillar, so if you imagine if they had a mind, they, they are going by instincts, but if they had a mind, they know that this stage, this caterpillar stage demands of me that I have to eat day and night to get That's ready right. for my next stage. That's right. and, and so the, the transformation process, see, tra transformation can facilitate change, but change cannot sustain transformation. Course, see, trans uh, with change, if I, I used to smoke cigarettes. Uh -huh. So if I if I decide I want to smoke, stop smoking in 2007, and the urge come back on me, I can revert right. back to being a smoker. That's true. But if I'm transformed from being what a smoker, say? I'll never pick it up again. Never. Because that stage of my life is over. That's right. And so I, I think Christians need to understand there's a distinct difference in the Word of God between being transformed and being changed. That's right. Change is temporary. Temporary. Transformation is permanent. Permanent. You can't permanent. go back. He can't go back. <laughs> and that's what I like. We've changed so much in the body of Christ that some of us go back 10 years Absolutely. and we're back because we have not been transformed no. by the renewing of our minds. The renewing of your mind. And, and that has to be a constant thing. We, got, we must spend time in the Word of God. And uh, see, the, 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 the challenge that I have as a preacher is getting people to understand. A lot of times when I'm preaching to you, you're falling victims in a lot of ways to hearsay. Correct. When you're talking to God and reading it from the Word, you're getting it firsthand. That's right. When we pray, we talk to God. When we read the Bible, He talks to us. That's true. And so a lot of times I think Christians get it, they do, they flip it. And, and they have a role reversal. And as a result of that, we fall victims to fall doctrines and so on and so forth. As opposed to reading it, getting it downloaded, let the Holy Spirit bring re revelation to it. Amen. And I'm telling you, 19, how old are you now? <laughs> you really want me to say this on air? <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell but I'm telling you. I'm in my late 50s. <laughs> but that is, I'm telling you, but... We should no longer be on milk. We should graduate to the meat. But here, here, here's what happens. And, and I was sharing this with somebody just this week. Uh -huh. If I take a piece of meat and I give it to a baby, the baby's teeth are not formed or anything like That's that correct. to be able to chew it, to, die, to get it ready for digestion. So the baby can only suck from it the flavoring. And That's this right. is what happens to a lot of Christians. <laughs> they get the flavoring of a wow. Christian walk, wow. but they don't get the nutrients from it. Amen. Because they're they not mature enough to break it up, to make it digestible, to, so that the body can assimilate it to be nutritious or to help in your spiritual growth. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I, if you haven't heard him, I'll encourage you to uh, find out how you can hear him if you're in the Bahamas. Look him up. He's come to the States. Yeah, you, you have some dates that you that you want to share with people? Uh, I have. I'm going to be in St. Louis, Missouri, 
uh, I forgot the name of the church right now, but on the 20, starting on the 25th to, to the 28th. Amen. And in West Palm Beach, on that same weekend, I'll be coming into West Palm Beach to Philadelphia Baptist Church. And uh, I tend to go to a lot of Baptist church because I think we need a lot of help. <laughs> yes, I've been Baptist. That's how I grew up Baptist. Yeah, we, we, we need, I, we I've need been a Baptist help. all my life, but yeah. I've, I've been non-denominational non all my life uh, in my way of We're thinking, thinking. and my way of understanding. I'm telling you, mm -hmm. I'm excited. And if you're in the Montgomery area, he's coming to Alabama. He went to school, he told me he went to school in Utah. <laughs> it kind of sure surprised did. me. I don't know why he didn't go to the University of Alabama. Y'all know I'm a big Alabama fan, so, but. I don't like Alabama. Oh, <laughs> see, see, see. Because they always beat up the Miami Hurricanes. <laughs> you heard that first, always beat up. And, and let me tell you something. And in life, you may not always win the big game, but if you got Christ in your life, you always gonna be you're, a you're always a winner. You're always you know, a winner. Um, I pay a lot of homage to to uh, part of the reason why I don't like Alabama is since they got that guy who used to be, you know, that guy who used to be with the Miami <laughs> Dolphins. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I'm real, real. Nick Saban. <laughs> Nick Saban, yeah. you know, he let us down. We thought he would have done a good job, but I respect the the, the tie yeah. because these guys are awesome. They've always been awesome. If you look at the NFL draft, they, they dominate the draft, and um, I, 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 I have a lot of respect for them. They wouldn't be my choice <laughs> as long as Nick is there. But, <laughs> but let me tell you something, and, and we are brothering, love the Lord. And when you live, God would have let you enjoy football. Everything. Everything. He wants you to enjoy life, but he wants you to put him first. Seek ye first. Exactly. The kingdom. And, and uh, you know, it's an age-old thing that we hear all the time, but we miss. A lot of people spend a lot of unnecessary energy going after stuff. Yeah. When yeah. Jesus said, if you seek first the kingdom of heaven, all these things, things the all, previous verses, all these things will all. be added. Let me, let me just share this real quick. I remember going walking in the mornings. And I watch the, the, like, there's a marina just here. Okay. And you watch the, the, the fish, the little small minnows. You, yes, know, you guys call yes. them minnows in America. The, 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 the larger fish would chase them to the shore. Mm -hmm. And they try to go to the shore to escape. But actually, God is feeding the birds that's lying the shore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. You see, the, the, the fish that's chasing them is fast Possibly. enough to catch them. Yeah. They got the speed to do it. But they run in, a, in an effort to escape. They run, they ground themselves on the shore, and you see the birds go picking them up. God knows how, how to feed every, every living creature. Every living and he'll creature. do that for anybody. We don't have to go after all of this stuff. Yeah, you have to make provisions for your family. Yeah, you have to look at, for the well-being of your family, your children, your wife, and all of that stuff. But at the end of the day, Man does not, life does not consist of the abundance of the things that he possesses. That's right. But if it's a working relationship with God, a functional relationship with God. I'm telling you, y'all, as y'all can see the beautiful scene, if you not, have not come to the Bahamas, come. And I, I'm going to say this, you know, even though we're coming to do a concert, I was at the prayer breath, I was going to share the word of God in the morning. But let me, let me say this, a lot of us, where I'm from, we are robbed of the people that actually embrace the islands. When we see it at a commercial, we see all the glamour. Exactly. We don't see that there's actual people here that actually love the Lord. And there, if, if, if I was to take the camera and span around this beach area, they're still willing from the hurricanes that came through. But yet they are an encouraged people that know God and know that they already have the victory. It's, it's amazing you should say draw a reference to the damages done by the, the hurricane that we just experienced back in October. I look, I drive through the city, and I look at, there are some trees that, that uh, got uh, got damaged by the wind, got knocked down, mm -hmm. and they died. Yes. There are others that got toppled over, their roots are exposed, but there's that small portion that is still alive. And if you can look over there, you can still see new growth yes. coming. Yes. Because even though they got knocked down, they survived. They survived. <laughs> they didn't die they in the didn't process. Die. And, and it, so I, I see a lot of time Christians walk like that. We, we have experiences in our lives that are designed or perhaps should have taken us out. Yes. And we didn't. We survive it and we learn to live again. We sprout new shoots. We sprout new ministries Glory. and new things are birthed in us. Yes. And, and, you know, God is good like that. Yeah, he's good. And I'm telling you, this is one of the young men we're going to support all we can. Amen. Because um, I'm telling you, even though we're on TV, you got to understand God's provision and God's purpose for placing you. Because Paul used his gift of tent making to get him into places that oh, otherwise wouldn't the gospel wouldn't have got him Amen. into. Amen. So his job of tent making got him into a place where he can share. Bless the Lord. The gospel. <laughs> so don't take what God has given you to work 
as action, then he he allowing you to help sustain you, but most of all to share the goodness. The of good Jesus. news of yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. He he is great above all gods, and there's none like him. And I I, I really believe that. For me as an individual, Christianity is extremely simple. Yes. We, we, you know, we get theologically deep and we want to go to, to archaeology and hermeneutics and <laughs> homiletics and all of that stuff. But Christianity is extremely simple because had it not, uh, uh, if it was not for its simplicity, then people like me perhaps wouldn't be saved. That's Only right. the intellectuals would be That's saved. That's right. And so God made Christianity so simple. When the guy got his eyes, he said, I don't know who did it because I couldn't see, see at the time. That's right. Where I knew I was blind, now I see. That's all. Yes. That's the only testimony I got. I was blind, but now, now I see. And so, as you said, we're on the beach. You can see in the background the water. You may can hear the music while they're enjoying the thing. You have the resort to this side, but you have in the center people that love the Lord. Amen. Is there anything you'd like to share with the people before we leave? What's the name of the town? Montgomery, Alabama. Montgomery, Alabama. I said I don't like the tide, <laughs> but I love you guys. Amen. And for what it's worth, keep on trusting God because even when the worst thing happens to you, God is just making a way out. If you could reach up and grab a hold of his purpose, your problem wouldn't be a problem. Well, until the next time, I'd enjoy myself. His information at the bottom of the screen. Contact him because he will bless you. And we look forward to seeing you a little later on. God bless you. This is yours truly, Anthony, right here with another level, Two Word Network.